Hey fellas, welcome to part three in this exciting episode. Uh, I tackle some issues with the wings. I show you how I fill the uh, the seam lines along the leading edges, my preferred method, and uh, some other stuff. I can't really remember what it was. I, I forgot what I put on here. But for your entertainment, I do include another bonus feature, which uh, it's kind of fun just putting the words bonus feature at, at the end and, and uh, showing you something different. But uh, anyway, they're both in primer. I am going to take today and kind of get an idea in my head, look at a bunch of reference picks to think about how I'm going to weather these, what they're, what they, what I want them to look like in the end. I'm not doing any pre-shading. Everything's going to be post-shading. Uh, I do know that they're both, both going to be in SEA camo, and I already uh, the the owner has de specific decals that he wants me to use. So, just going to take today and get an idea and uh, how I want them to look, and uh, episode four will be painting. So uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, enjoy that bonus feature at the end, fellas. All right. I'm uh, tackling the wings right now, and if you take a look at the instructions, they have you insert these little flaps, and I think, I'm, I'm not sure, Maybe somebody can post it in the comments. I think these little flaps are only up when they're doing some kind of a roll or when they're turning in the air. I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't think they're, they're speed brakes or air brakes. Uh, I, I, typically, they would be down unless you have it up in the air. But Trumpeter decides to put them in as a separate piece, and they're a pain in the butt. Because, and it wouldn't be so bad if it was a brand new Tamiya kit, because they would engineer it where they just snap right in. Trumpeters isn't like that. So here's kind of the mess that you get. And you can see the light going through there where, and, and trust me, I did filing and cutting just to get them to this point. So they, they don't fit in there that well. So if you decide to, to leave them up, then it's not going to be that big of an issue. But if you put them down like I'm doing, it's a, it's a pain in the butt. So I've got these glued in, and I used to me an extra thin quick setting. And I also made up some sprue goo. And those of you that don't know what sprue goo is, it's uh, to me an extra thin mixed with uh, bits of sprue that I get from a kit. I just cut up the little pieces of sprue and put it in there. Well, I mix some up and used to me an extra thin. For it so it dries a little bit quicker. I've just uh, I've had bad luck using sprue goo with the uh, the regular extra thin. I just think this sets up a lot quicker. So what I'm gonna do is on the inside where these join up, I'm going to smear that with sprue goo. And what that's gonna do is stiffen up these joins and it's going to fill in these little cracks and gaps so these aren't going to break off plus it's going to kind of fill in and kind of act as a filler that's, that's and, and it typically doesn't go through the top because it's extra th or the uh, quick setting stuff it uh, it starts to stiffen up pretty darn quick so I just smear this along here, along the inside, where nobody's gonna see anyway. Just like so. I guess you could come along with a, with a filler in, on top, kind of like with my testers filler or um, Mr. Surfacer and then kind of wipe it away. I wouldn't recommend using a, a different type of putty on top because any putty on top that you'd have to sand because then you're just going to sand all this detail away and it'll be super hard to replicate that. So I'll let this set up. I may put another coat, but as you can see, those little spaces have went away. So this is going to dry in there. 
cover up my spaces, make the join real solid so I don't have to worry about them breaking off, and I won't have to do any filling up top. It's not going to look the best, but, you know, I'm just trying to mitigate the, the poor engineering that, that Trumpeter's uh, given me. All right, one other thing that I want to do is on these wings, this is going to be part of the intake where it's going to be visible. And they've got three ejector pin marks, I got that correct this time, <coughs> that you need to fill in. And it's easiest to do this on uh, before you put them together. Now nah, the other side's over there, but... You get the point. Um, I'm going to have to take care of those before I close it up. Then whenever I close these up, I'm going to have a seam line, seam line run along here. What I'm going to do is take my sprue goo and just let my sprue goo, and I've got it uh, just thin enough to where it's going to flow. And I'll put several coats of that right along the seam, and it'll close that seam up. All right, I've got all my wings and flaps and everything glued together, and they some of them went together well. The wing on the G model is a little bit different than the D model. This uh, end part right here is different, and you can kind of tell that they just, I don't know if Trumpeter just hap haphazardly remolded this part. Um, one of them, instead of having a seam line, it was like a raised mold line. And uh, I don't know, it just, it doesn't go together very well. The whole wing doesn't go together very well at all. You've got this front flap thing that, uh, or this, the, the uh, leading edge of the wing, that's a separate, two separate pieces that you have to glue together. And it's just a, a nightmare. There may have been a better way to do it. I don't know. I glued those together and then I stuck them in here. I've had to use some sprue goo along this edge because it was just horrible. Some of these other little spaces I can fill in with my tester's putty and wipe away and you're probably not gonna notice them. Got my flaps on there that I showed you on the uh, previous part and they're all good to go. But uh, one thing I, I wanted to tackle with, uh, show you guys how I tackle this issue and I know I've shown you how I tackle seam lines before, but I'm going to show you how I tackle the seam lines along the leading edges of the wings. So I'll take my Zappa Gap CA, I might put a little much. This is a Zappa Gap CA thin, and I want thin because I want it to flow down into tiny crevices. Then I'll take my Ammo MIG pigment. I, I, would, I would assume you can use any type of metallic pigment, and I went through this before. Uh, I've only found that metallic pigment works. And uh, any other type of pigment doesn't really work, from my experience. Something with the, the metalizers in the, in the pigment. And uh, what this does, it kind of softens the CA and uh, lets, me, lets me see where it actually goes. Because if you just use clear CA, it's a little more difficult to see where it goes. You can use, use this without the metallic pigment, but I just, I, I like this method better. So get this mixed up and let's look at this portion right here. Now, when I glue these together, I try not to squish them too much because I don't want to deform the part. And uh, this one, I, I used my extra thin on the inside and then I took sprue goo and went along the inside. Now this part's gonna be visible because it's gonna be part of the intake. But uh, I uh, excuse my my nose. I've I've got allergies, so. But uh, I didn't want to deform it too much. But it's on there. It's nice and solid. I got the sprue goo to reinforce it. You could also use CA glue. I didn't use CA glue because uh, uh, when I when I try to run CA glue down something like this, I always put too much, and it just goes everywhere, and makes a mess. But. Uh, so anyway, I've got this line right here. Now, instead of starting to sand, and the sanding tools that I use for this typically are these Infini sanding sponges. And they're soft and they're pliable. 
but they still have a little bit of rigidity. And that allows me to sand and not make flat, flat spots. Now you can use a file like this. I mean, it is kind of bendable, but it's pretty stiff. If I go along here and run straight, I'm gonna get a flat spot. You can avoid that by taking it over and curving it. But I think these are just a little bit better. You can also use sandpaper, which kind of conforms to the curve. Uh, the only the only issue that uh, I've found with sandpaper is, you, for me, maybe it's just me, but I, you end up destroying a lot more detail than what you need to. But uh, sometimes I do use that. So on this part, what I typically like to do is, I'll say I'll take my 600 grit, and I'll just kind of smooth out that area, but I'm still going to have seams. I also want to get a little paper towel with some rubbing alcohol. This is isopropyl alcohol. I'll wipe it down. Okay. Now I'm going to take my glue looper, and I've got a couple different sizes. I've got a really small for like the edges of, say, edges of the wings. Then I've got my bigger one, which is, allows me to put more CA glue in. So I'm just gonna come along here and start filling that in. Just like so. And you wanna avoid getting it everywhere else but the seam. Because you don't wanna have to sand it down. And you, you, basically you just wanna sand the least amount as possible to get a good join. Man, my nose is really bad today. Now this up here, this is gonna be a different animal that I'll have to tackle. I may fill that in with CA glue and try to build it up. But uh, like right here, <laughs> it's just, look at that, it's just horrible. So I'll have to build that up with some CA or something else, but I want something nice and strong. So I'm just filling this in. Now I can come along because I don't like to wait for stuff. I'll just come along and I'll run my accelerator right along here now I'll take my 600 and I'll start just lightly I'm, I'm not using very much pressure at all And I'm still kind of going back and forth, even though it is the, the sponge, because I don't want to get flat spots. So I'll wipe it away, and then I'll check it with the light to see where I'm low or high. I can kind of see some along here. Now I can take an 800, come along and smooth it out. And these sanding sponges really hog away material fast. Wipe it down again. I'll look. I'll check it with my fingernail. Okay, and that looks like that seam is pretty close. I'm still gonna need to do some work up here, but I'm gonna hold off on really refining that until I get this little part filled in and sanded. I could probably come around and it wouldn't be that noticeable if I just kinda smooth this area out. But we'll see. I'm still gonna need to to do a little bit there. I don't want to take too much just because I don't want to uh, deform the part too much. 
So that's as easy as that. I mean, that's pretty simple. And then I can come with my, my thousand grit and, and kind of smooth out the scratches. Then all I have to do is come back in with my razor saw to repair the, the panel lines. just like so. And then I'll come back in and repair some of those rivets that I've destroyed. But this way I've taken down the least amount of material as possible. And uh, so I haven't really deformed the part. And, and that's kind of what you're going for. Now on these, a small area like this, and I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but I've got it marked. Now, I've already sanded these down with the 600 and then the 800, but you'll find oftentimes, if we can get in here right there, you can see a little spot. And you can come along and you can check. Now, how I deal with this is I'll take my, uh, let's see, my little bitty glue looper. And I'm going to come in here. Just dab some in there. I got a little bit much right there and I'll just wipe it off. We'll hit it with the accelerator. And I can take my sanding sponges, but we'll use a thousand grit sandpaper. And I'm just going real lightly, just smoothing that down. I don't want to dig in too deep. I don't, again, I don't want to deform the part. I just want to knock that CA glue down. And this sandpaper is a little stiff. It's not real good. It's Harbor Freight crap, which isn't the best sandpaper in the world. Come back with my 800. And my 1,000. Okay, I'm going to look and feel... And I think that's taken care of it. I'll also go around and I'll check each one of the, the uh, seams along the back edges of each one of these to see if I see any, any seam lines. And then I'll take care of it again with the small glue looper, just like I have here. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I want to touch on, the vertical stabilizer, the kit has you... Let me grab the model. Okay, now what Trumpeter does in their instructions is they have you put the vertical stabilizer on the plane when you put the two halves together. They've got this uh, little part right here that fits into here, and then they've got this uh, these pins that fit into this, and you're supposed to take the two halves, insert them into those, and put them on the plane. Now, I don't really like doing that just because I want to be able to, to uh, it's a lot easier for me to check the seam lines and to take care of those while it's off the plane if possible. Now, what I did with the other one is I came in and there's, you can't see them because I cut them off, but on the other side of that little square, there are a couple little, uh, little bitty like pins and I cut those off just so I can maneuver and fit this around. And now what I'll do is I'll take my snippers and I'll just cut that pin out there. So I will be able to kind of stretch this out a little bit and I'll be able to fit it in there once I get this taken care of. And I just find that's easier to do. And I can line it up because I've got the seam lines right here to make sure everything's aligned. 
And uh, I think on the other one, I might have put a little bit of 5-minute epoxy on the inside. I can't exactly remember. I really don't think it's necessary because you got a lot of surface area in which to cement this onto the fuselage. So that's just a, 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 a way that I like to do it. Obviously, you can do it either way. I just find this to be easier. Okay, now I'm going to put the wings on. And let's just take a look at how these fit in. <clears throat> now there's a tab here and a here, and they're kind of like locating tabs. But where, you, where you're gonna get your most action, well, the most surface area to glue, is gonna be on this intake part. Now you see I painted this white, and if we can look in here, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell with my camera, but, if you do shine a light in there, you can kind of see, uh, maybe. You can see it in person, the camera's not really picking it up. But uh, you, can, you can definitely see the shimmering of the that turbine in there. And this is the reason that I painted the entire inside black, is because you can kind of see down in there. Now when you get the wing on, it's gonna cut down a little bit of the view but you'll still be able to see some of it. Now, what, what I did on the last one, what I'm gonna do on this one, is I'm gonna put a little bit of five minute epoxy on this part and on this little tab right here. And I'm gonna get it in there and I'm gonna hold it because there's a little bit of give on this particular wing. I'm gonna hold it down and that should set it in the, uh, the right angle to the, to the airplane. Now there's still gonna be a little bit of a gap. I'll come along here and I'll hit it with my Tamiya Extra Thin and let that dry and then I'll come along and take care of my gaps along the, the uh, where, it, where it joins up there, the wing root. But that's kind of what we're looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my epoxy on here, get this set. Uh, I would film it, but uh, it's just gonna be me holding the wing on here. So <laughs> I'll... Uh, Catch in a bit. Okay, fellas, the wings are on and pretty happy with how this one's come together. I'm not gonna know, I've, I mean, I've checked it, but I'm not gonna really know uh, what kind of flaws I need to fix once I get primer on it. The other one was pretty good. <laughs> I didn't have to do much work on it. The, uh, the wings went on pretty good. The there were some seam lines, which I, or, uh, some uh, gaps along the wing root, but I filled those in with Milliput, or my Magic Sculpt, actually. And it was a little bit more on this side, which I think is just kind of common with this kit. But I took care of that. I've got, uh, I don't think I showed you on the last one, but the uh, front windscreen is in, and I got all the photo etch and stuff in there, so. Hopefully when I unmask the windscreen at the end, it'll look pretty cool. The um, one thing that I did do is I removed the tabs off of the, the canopies because I wanted, to, I wanted to use those to mask the cockpit when I paint. So I went ahead and removed those and uh, another reason was those, th this being that brittle clear plastic, uh, those have a tendency to break. So I thought, you know, I'm going to end up breaking them anyway. So what I did is I ended up making, out of some leftover photo etch, I just bent some of these pieces that came with the kit for the flaps, which I didn't use. I bent those, and what I'll do at the end when I put all the other photo etch inside the canopies, I'll just put these in and to replace the tab. So I think I'll be good to go on that. Uh, I've started, let's get the camera up. I've started painting all the landing gear and all that stuff. Uh, I've already got one of the, these exhaust uh, panels. I've already got them painted for the uh, D model. So I've started painting these on the G model. So I wanna get all that stuff taken care of. Uh, I've also got all the bombs and missiles and stuff painted, as we can see here. 
I did those the first thing just because I don't like painting bombs and missiles. <coughs> so I decided to, to go ahead and get those out of the way. I've also got the tanks all primed. I've got um, two tanks for the D model and then a centerline tank for the G model. Um, one thing that was lacking with this kit was the detail in the landing uh, gear doors. And so what I did is I just added some styrene, as you can see right here, put in some rivets, and I did that on some of the other pieces as well, just because they were just flat plastic and they had a bunch of uh, ejector pin marks. So that's kind of where I'm at. I appreciate you watching. Uh, the next video, we will get on with uh, painting these two birds, and I'm not going to black base it, and I'm not going to do any panel lines. I'm going to do everything with post shading, so that should be fun. One of the issues that I found with a lot of these older kits is, especially from the 2000s, they supply you with rubber tires, and they're not the easiest thing to deal with. They look kind of dorky because they sit up on you know they sit up really high you can't flatten them out uh now i've experimented with this in the past and uh it's one of those things you need to practice before you actually do it because you can really screw it up if you don't have an extra extra tire uh, what i'm doing with this trumpeter kit and uh if you can take a look at these i've already flattened these out and how I'm doing this, take a look at both of these. I've already got one set done. Got the front one done. It just adds a little bit of weight to the to the plane. And it kind of it kind of um, adds a little bit more realism in my opinion. Now they're not bulbous out like you would typically see, but uh, you know it is just slightly, but it does give it that uh, weighted appearance. <laughs> So, how I'm doing this, and as you can see here, I've experimented, and I've done this before, but, uh, you know, it's up to you whether you, you decide to, to tackle something like this, because you can really screw it up. So what I'm doing is I'm picking a point in which to cut my tire. Now, I've got these two things right here, so basically I'm going to cut right along here to get my flat spot. So I'm just taking my X-Acto knife. And I'm trying to cut as straight as I can. And it tends to tail off at the end. So I've kind of got it cut off at an angle. So I need to kind of trim that. And this is just, this is like not the easiest stuff to deal with. So I want to get it as flat or as even as possible on my cut. And I want to keep all the tires uniform. Because typically if you come in here and you try to, to do this, it just kind of peels away. And uh, it's just not that easy to deal with. So I'm going to come in here and do a little bit more trimming. Okay. Now I've got my candle going. So I'm just going to run my tire over here real quick and kind of melt all those little grublies, and I'm gonna hold it down, and hopefully I got that straight. And that looks pretty straight. And uh, it's got a little bit of a, it's not gonna to be too bad. Sometimes it'll kind of curl up. And, if you, and I could come back and heat it, but you don't wanna heat it too much because you're gonna end up ruining your tire. But that's basically how I do it. And then I'll check the tires to make sure they're straight, up and down, pretty close, not too bad. That should be good enough. And then what I'll do is I'll put my wheels in just like you see here. And I've got a flattened rubber tire. It gives a little bit more, adds a little bit more realism to the model. So that's how I do that.